Hey coach, values on properties are going crazy right now. Should I sell what I have? Let's talk about it today on the Landlord Coach Daily Is Show. Five, four, three, two, one, zero, ignition, lift off. Hey everybody, welcome to the Landlord Coach Daily Show. My name is Mark Dolfini, Landlord Coach and host of the Landlord Coach Daily Show. It's really good to see you. So today we're going to be talking about a question that I have been getting uh, quite a lot that's been pinging my messenger, kind of like a cash register lately. It's like, hey coach, values on my properties are crazy. Should I sell right now? We're going to talk about that because that is a really good question for a lot of people and... We're going to get to that in just a second. So first and foremost, if you are interested in getting a copy of this rag over here, the Time Wealthy Investor 2.0, which makes a great, uh, I don't know, coaster. If you've got a short leg of a table, about you know inch and a half, you can put that underneath there. Or you might actually want to read it. I don't know. I, I've been told it's a really good book. I think it's a really good book. And I am a little sli uh, slighted, but honestly, I am pretty proud of uh, the, the creation that is. And it helps you set up a rental business that doesn't run your life. If you'd like a free copy... Just go over to landlordcoach.com forward slash videos. All I'm asking you to do is cover shipping. So let's get back to the topic at hand, which is values of my properties are crazy right now. Should I sell? So you've got a couple options, right? Um, let's just talk about the, I, the obviously the, the question is, should I get the money out of my existing property? So let's say you bought a property a couple years ago. You've got a bunch of equity on it. Let's say you've, you've only paid down a couple years, but you've got a bunch of equity now in the property and you want to put that equity to use. All right. So the question that comes to my mind first and foremost is why? Why do you want to get that equity out? What are you planning on doing with that equity? But here's the thing. We're going to come back to that. So if you're going to get the equity out of that property, you've got a couple of choices. And a couple of choices are, could you sell it? Or could you borrow against it, right? So those are the, you know, the, the the two big ones right there that are, I'm sure that there's other creative things that people could do with it. But let's just say right now that your choices to get the equity out of the property are to sell it or to borrow against it. All right. So let's look first if you're going to sell the property. Well, what does that do? Well, of course, that kicks off. Uncle Sam comes with his big old hand and wants to put it in your pocket. And of course, you're either going to be paying capital gains or you're going to be taxed at ordinary income. I will give you a hint if you're not familiar with either one of those two things. Capital gains is the much lower one. That's the one you want, right? But if you tend to do this an awful lot, if you're flipping lots of properties and you do that often, eventually it's going to be like, yeah, you need to be taxed as ordinary income because this is how you make a living, right? So if you were to if you were to do, for example, don't take this as, a, as gospel, but if you did, you know, one house uh, every six months, that could probably, you know, pass as capital gains, right? Which is not ordinary income. But if you did one house every week, um, that sounds more like a business and you would be taxed as ordinary income. Just saying, don't use that as the litmus test. Talk to your CPA. But the really sucky thing about the, the, the selling of the property is that you get hit with the benefit that you've had, especially if you've held it as a rental property for a while, which is the non-cash deduction called depreciation. So all those non-cash deductions that you were able to take while you held the property as a rental, that gets added back into what's called depreciation recapture. And that sucks. <laughs> so all the benefit that you had gets added back. And it, and it what it does it is it impacts your basis. And now you are taxed on the difference between your sales price and now your adjusted basis. So that sucks. Um, so basically, um, long story short on that, I'm not going to get into a whole tutorial about depreciation recapture because that makes one eyelids fall. And this would not make for an interesting show. Do some research on that. At a minimum, do some research, but absolutely, this is why you need a professional like a CPA in your corner to tell you what your tax liability could potentially be if you're going to sell a property. Here's the other side of it, though, in, in terms of why I'm really kind of a buy and hold guy pretty much forever, is what happens when you sell it? Then what? I, I mean, you could do a 1031 exchange, which again is something that you should educate yourself on, which is where you take a property that's similar to what you had, you buy another property that is the same basically, and it basically resets the clock. 
So you don't ha you're basically deferring the taxes down the road. I've said basically a lot. Anyway, you kick the, ca the the tax can down the road a little bit. So if you were going to sell that property, then that's where that's where that happens. So you're basically reinvesting. I said basically again. Why do I keep saying that? So you're reinvesting your uh, what would be your capital gains into that property. So again, there's very specific rules on that. I am not going to go get into all of that right now, but again, 1031 exchange is something that you can do and that does keep the tax man at bay. Um, but you're still left with the, the whole problem of, you know, if you're selling a high value property and you're going to look for another high value property to put it into, you're still buying another high value property. So really the only thing that you're saving maybe is the, is the depreciation on the property where you're resetting the clock. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because that, you know, you do get to take the, the depreciation again on a property that's very similar in, in nature. So, you know, but those property, those transactions need to be held at arm's length, meaning you, you can't like, you know, go to your, go to your, your, uh, you know, go to your wife and say, hey, you buy that property. I'm going to swap this property. And, you know, that's not an arm's length transaction. You can't do that. Uh, or at least you can do it. Just don't get caught. Um, because there's obviously, you know, tax, you, you know, Al Capone went to jail for like went to prison, big boy prison for tax evasion. You don't need that sort of a so, sort of headache. So um, so that's the selling side of it. I am not a fan of selling stuff really unless it's just an unperforming asset or just doesn't just isn't a good fit for what you are hoping to accomplish in your life. So that leaves borrowing. So borrowing against the equity in the property um, might not be a bad idea um, because it's based on a higher appraised value, right? The valuations of the properties are really high right now. So if you were going to get, you know, let's say you did have equity on that property that you wanted to tap into and you can borrow against that. Now, again, I'm an anti-debt person. Now, I'm not like, you know, I, I just don't like debt. I'm not saying that I don't use debt as a tool in my toolbox, but I really got to be clear in terms of what it is I'm trying to accomplish. So I am absolutely not saying run out and get a bunch of debt on, you know, to tap into the equity in your properties, because that's probably one of the big, well, not probably, that is one of the things that got me into trouble back in 08 and 09, because I did re-leverage up my properties and took that cash out and uh, bought more properties, right? I was just leveraging up all the way. So um, it's good as, as long as it's not over leveraged. Now, what does that mean? I, I mean, what I, you know, that's, that's a whole other conversation, but I want to make sure that I'm at least cash flowing the properties, even on my leveraged position with very conservative estimates, very conservative rents that I've budgeted adequately for vacancy expense, um, that I've adequately um, budgeted for capital expenditures, CapEx, and, uh, and also maintenance and things like that. Most people don't. Most people just say, well, I'm clearing $100 over my principal interest taxes and insurance and I'm good to go. You are not good to go, sir. <laughs> you are setting yourself up for failure and disappointment. Ask me how I know, because that's exactly what I did. So if you're interested in a uh, free download, you can go to um, this page right here, landlordcoach.com forward slash videos. And there's actually a download in there that will show you how to make sure that you're analyzing your properties properly. The one argument I would make right now, however, for borrowing is the fact that everybody pretty much is in agreement that we are to expect inflation, especially as the government is pumping out money uh, like crazy into the economy and there are trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars in the economy. Everybody's pretty much in agreement that inflation is going to be a thing. So keep in mind, if you're getting into a fixed rate payment, and it's fixed rate is kind of important with that. If you're getting into a fixed rate payment, you're going to be paying back future, you're paying back a loan with a set amount of principal and interest. So you're paying back a loan with dollars that are going to be worth less in the future, right? So because the net spending power of $1,000 today is not going to be worth as much, especially in a high inflation environment, as it would be in 12 or 24 or 48 months, right? So that is the one argument I could make for getting into and leveraging properties now. But it's got to be a fixed rate of interest because if you're getting into adjustable rates, then it kind of offsets that, it mitigates their risk. Um, but again, even if the, the, the rates are low and if it's maybe on a five-year adjustable seven year adjustable, something like that. But even still, I just don't like adjustable rates. I like, I like knowing what I'm getting into. I would rather pay a little bit higher rate if I knew it was going to be fixed 
then an adjustable rate, not knowing really what the what the climate's going to be in three or six or 10 years or whatever. So let's go back to should I sell or borrow? Well, what are you trying to accomplish? What do you want the money out for? What is it? And again, this comes back to the original circuit breaker conversation is what, how is this in alignment with your vision? What are you trying to accomplish? What is it you personally, and I'm not talking about your business, but what is it you personally are trying to accomplish by selling or borrowing against this property or whatever it is, but tapping into that equity? Does it serve your vision? And if it does, then I would say if it's in, that if it's in alignment with your vision, then absolutely go ahead and do it. But many times I'm having this conversation, the question when posed is met by stares, like blank stares. I don't know. I never really thought about it. Well, this is your wake up call. This is your time to actually start thinking about it. So when these opportunities come along for you, that you know automatically, yeah, this is in alignment with my with my vision. This is going to help me, fill, you know, fill in these blanks that I've been wanting for my personal life. Because I'm going to take that hundred thousand dollars after depreciation recapture, and my wife and I are going to, you know, buy a boat and, you know, live in a marina and and sell sell fish bait, you know, whatever, <laughs> you know, that's, that's what they're going to do. Like whatever it is, as long as that's in alignment with their personal vision, then I would say absolutely move forward with it. But again, you've got to have a clear vision in the first place to make sure that that stuff all makes sense. And uh, that's all I have for today. So hopefully this made sense to you guys. I, you know, keep these questions coming because these are helpful, not just, um, you know, for, for that individual, but helpful for others as well. So please be sure to place a value on your free time, because if you don't, Someone else will, but most important, there is no amount of money that will make time irrelevant. Have an awesome day, and I will see you guys next time.